Hi there folks, Michael from First Aid Oz once again and we're looking at choking. Now choking uh, obviously is an obstruction of the airway so it can often be uh, food, eating something too quickly or drinking something too quickly or an object uh, that you've stuck in your mouth. Um, with little children in particular, you know, often they'll pick things up off the floor, they'll put it straight in their mouth regardless of whether it's food or not. Uh, it could possibly be uh, even dentures, mouth guard, those type of things, but more commonly uh, probably food. Alright, so in the case of choking, what often happens is the person will cough, okay? They'll cough to try and clear the object. That, that's the body's normal thing to try and clear uh, a blockage. Uh, but the coughing process requires uh, some air still to be to getting through. Okay, so if the person is coughing, that that's not a great sign that you know they've got a blockage. But it's good that they're able to cough, because uh, more often than not, the coughing will eventually clear the object. Okay, if they're coughing and the object doesn't clear, or they're coughing and then suddenly. Uh, they, they stop coughing, they can't cough anymore because there's now uh, maybe the object is embedded further. Uh, that's a more serious situation. Very important if the person is coughing though that we don't continue to give them anything by mouth. So don't give them more drink or more food thinking you might push the object further down or, or dislodge it because sometimes that can be the difference between being able to cough and now no longer being able to cough. Uh, once no air can get into through the airways, the person's lips will start to turn blue, they'll start to become pale and they will uh, faint, they will collapse, they can become unconscious um, because now we have uh, lack of oxygen uh, going to the brain which is again potentially fatal. So before we get to that stage however, allow them to cough, okay, if the coughing doesn't seem to be working, I want to call triple zero, okay, I don't want to wait too long. It's always better to have uh, the paramedics or the ambulance arrive and perhaps by the time they get there they, they may not be required than it is to not call them and wait too long and by the time they get there there's nothing they can do. Okay, so as a first aider, particularly in the workplace, um, you know, but, but even I would be the same at home, I would call the ambulance earlier rather than later. So in the case where they've been coughing for a while and it's not really helping um, or, or it's becoming more difficult to cough or the coughing stop I call triple zero straight away if I've got someone else I instruct them to call it call them now beyond that then the treatment the recommended treatment is a combination of what we call uh, back blows and chest thrusts so using uh, my mannequin here uh, Bear in mind that this would, you know, be, be a, a, a person. So let's say it's, it's a child um, or an adult. Now, I'm demonstrating across my knee. If you can get them across your knee, that's fine. Uh, if not, it can be across the chair, um, across you know, the edge of the bed, or, or if it's a lower table or something. Um, but basically, you want them angled. Okay, you don't want them upright. Okay, the idea is. If they're upright, okay, and, and you're able to dislodge the object, it can resettle further down, okay, which is not going to help. So the idea of having them angled forwards is that if I'm able to dislodge the object manually, uh, it can work its way loose and it's easier to, to either cough out, fall out, vomit out, whatever the case might be. We just need to get it out of there so airflow can continue. All right, so I take the heel of my hand Okay, between the shoulder blades, okay, and I want to strike in the direction that I want the object to uh, come out. Okay, so not just straight down. So it's it's striking um, upwards, if you like. So using the heel of the hand, and it's five. Okay, so it's one strike, two strike, three strike. I do that five times with considerable force. Okay, you're not going to cause injury. Okay, and it needs to be considerable to, to effectively shock the object loose. Okay, this is something that's embedded. If it wasn't embedded, it could easily have been coughed out. So, that, so the person hasn't been able to cough it out. So we need a fairly substantial amount of force. All right, so we've attempted five back blows. The object hasn't uh, shaken loose and it hasn't come out. So they've still got the blockage in here. So we, we perform what we call uh, chest thrusts. Now I get my hand uh, behind the person's back 
and the other hand using the heel again on uh, the lower part of the sternum and I compress one, two, three, four, five again. Hopefully uh, it causes a gasp type reflex because um, I'm effectively compressing the area which creates a little bit of uh, force, air force from that gasp to maybe um, assist the object become loose and then the person once again would cough and the object hopefully would come out. Now, how many times do I do that? Basically, I should have already called triple zero, the ambulance should be on the way and I repeat that process pretty much until the ambulance gets there or until the object is embedded, um, the embedded object uh, works its way loose and comes out and the person returns to normal breathing. All right, so it would be five back blows, five chest thrusts, repeat, repeat, repeat. The only time I would stop is if the person becomes unconscious and breathing stops. We have a different situation there. Now we have a situation where the person has to undergo uh, CPR and if you have available, defibrillation because the two key uh, triggers are unconscious casualty and not breathing. So that can be a consequence of a blockage which is not able to be cleared. Now the obvious problem that you're going to have is that you've still got this object uh, embedded in the airways. So when the person is unconscious, if we're able to uh, dislodge the object as we would normally try and do in our doctor's A, B, C, D, we do. If, it's, uh, if we can't see it or if we can't get to it, we don't do nothing. Okay? In that case, we can still do uh, the CPR and defibrillation. Okay? The only thing it's going to compromise is, is if we have a breathing uh, component uh, that you, know, you may not get the air through. All right, so you can do CPR, you can attempt to breathe. If you find there's no inflation going on, you've got the option to do compressions only. Okay, compressions only is going to be better than doing nothing. And still, again, if you have defibrillation uh, or defibrillator handy, you still uh, go through that process. Um, watch our CPR video uh, for more details on, on how to do that. Uh, so we, we won't run all, through them all now, but remember the, the triggers are unconscious casualty, not breathing. Now it's gone from a choking situation to a CPR situation because breathing has stopped, heart either has or will stop. If we do nothing, uh, the person is dead effectively. All right, so that's for a, a, a grown child or an adult. So it might be a case, and probably more commonly with an infant, okay, you know, when babies are uh, learning to eat or first eating, you know, we, we become uh, very conscious of, of them not choking on their food because they haven't developed uh, that habit of, you know, how, how, to, how to chew and what to chew and how, how for long. You know, and often choking is caused by swallowing food which is not chewed enough or, or you know. Um, so I need to support uh, the baby's head, so I'll just support uh, under the jaw like that, okay. And I, again, I want to angle the baby downwards. You see some people, you know, hang, hang the baby from their feet, yeah, probably, probably a little bit extreme. Um, but again, angle forwards. This time I don't use the heel of my hand, I use um, my fingers still a considerable amount of force for the baby but not the same amount of force as the adult okay not dissimilar to when you do cpr you know you're using two fingers as opposed to two hands but you're getting the same degree of compression okay but doesn't require as much force so i'm using um, the tips of my fingers and it wants to be in that direction again so it's one two three four Five, okay, if the object doesn't embed, uh, doesn't shake loose, same thing with the chest thrust. Okay, now I can use my heels. I don't press as hard. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm trying to get that gasp reflex uh, where they cough the object out. Again, if the baby becomes limp, if they start to, to, to you know, the head becomes floppy and, and they clearly looks like they've stopped breathing, this becomes a situation again where we need to do CPR and defibrillation if you've got a defibrillator uh, available. All right, so choking um, is a very serious condition. More often than not, you're able to dislodge the object with coughing, uh, where coughing is not um, helping. Call triple zero, five chest thrusts, 
uh, sorry, five back blows, five chest thrusts. You keep repeating that um, until either the object clears and breathing returns or until the paramedics get there and they will take over. Okay, so that's choking.